A wise man once said, The thankful receiver bears a plentiful harvest. Well, if that's true, then the man in our story lived a life of drought. Let's get into it. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. <laughs> yes, and that includes sound effects. Today, we are doing this by sharing a fictional story, yet one that contains many truths and lessons scattered throughout. I'm Timothy Gregory, letting you know that this episode is a fantastic listen, not only for adults, but for kids, too. Now, I've got a task for you. Think of something that not once have you appreciated, and yet it's a lovely addition to your life. Got it? Good. Feeling thankful? All right, hold on to that attitude of thankfulness because we're going to explore it on this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. I'm sure helpful or kind acts of mine and yours have been overlooked or unacknowledged more than once. The truth is, we likely do that to others without even knowing. In fact, the man in our story thought that gratitude was evidence of weakness and that the words thank you were a meaningless courtesy. Ironically and wonderfully appropriate for this time of Thanksgiving. Let's get into it, folks. The Ingrate, a Thanksgiving classic. Whoa, right there. That should do it. It's so much easier to do this with two people. I've hitched a lot of trailers. <laughs> Lost any on the road? <laughs> no, but I've had a few flat tires. <laughs> yeah, looks like we're getting out just in time. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to turn into a blizzard. It sure could. Too bad it couldn't have snowed before. <laughs> I don't mind it coming after us. Yeah, had there been snow in the ground, the deer would have been easier to hunt. Yeah, but we're still able to get away for a week and come up here in these beautiful woods. A lot of good it did. Hey, we had a good time. We're leaving without our deer, Grayson. Going back empty-handed. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Yeah, that we need to come back next year. Guess I'm more practical. Well, what do you mean? I like to see results. When I spend my time and money, I want to see results. I like the old saying, don't accept substitutes. Well, Ethan, you've gone hunting before. There's always a chance of not shooting anything. I didn't make this trip just for a chance to shoot at a deer. I came up here to get one. Oh, sorry you're disappointed. I'm still going to thank God for a great week. Deer or no deer? You would. What does that mean? Listen, little brother, you're on such good terms with God. Then you ask him why he did such a bad job of scheduling the snow. Maybe I trust his timing. Well, his timing has already started, and our families are expecting us home tomorrow for Thanksgiving. So let's get back before the snow comes down any harder. Today, we turn from our usual practice of dramatizing true stories of real people, and instead share a story that is not of itself true, but which contains much of what we think and believe is the truth. And the occasion is the observance of Thanksgiving Day. For those outside of the United States, our observance of Thanksgiving Day is a custom that originated with those who first came from Europe and settled in North America. In many respects, it's a harvest festival coming in November with the onset of winter and when the farmer's work in the fields over much of the country has finished. But this holiday does more than mark the season. It's been declared a time for giving thanks to God for the many blessings he has brought us during the year. And so, this season of Thanksgiving, we're pleased to bring you this classic story of the ingrate, right now on Unshackled. Grayson and I were close growing up, but college and careers and differing interests led us apart for a number of years. It was his idea to take a fifth wheeler to the mountains and spend a week hunting before celebrating Thanksgiving together with our families. It was soon obvious to both of us how night and day we'd become. Yeah, I've always felt there's a special quality. No, you think that's a bit Pollyanna? No, actually, 
I think there's almost a magical feel in the air for the first snow. What would be magical is if we don't end up in the ditch. Well, don't you find it beautiful? Oh, my word. What? You're gonna give thanks for it? <laughs> it is tempting. Don't. We could have used this snow all week. Now it comes when we could use a dry road. It's not that bad, Ethan. If I was a praying man, you know what I'd be saying? I'm afraid to ask. I'd say thank you for absolutely nothing. Ethan? Only you, God, would follow up such a failed hunting trip with a miserable snowstorm. Given all that's in thy fathomless bounty, we give thee thanks. What is wrong with you? I think it's you. What, what do you mean? Never mind. No, tell me. I want to know. I'm sorry, Grayson. I just haven't gotten accustomed to the fact that my one-time normal, healthy, sensible brother has gone and developed a religious twitch. Oh, that's what you call Christianity? I can't help but feel a little responsible. You? I'm your big brother, and I should have been around more. Should have been a guiding light. I've been so wrapped up in my own life. Ethan. It's my fault that you're now one of these fanatics. They're not fanatics. Not to you. You know what? I'm glad you've noticed a change. Since I've trusted in Christ, he's made changes in me. My personality, attitudes, in my heart. Give me a break, Grayson. We are what we want to be. We only have ourselves to thank or blame for any of it. In a way, that's true. We do have choices, and what we become is very likely to grow out of those choices. Exactly. But your view is that each of us are the gods of our own lives, right? That we can make or break ourselves, that we can grow great or small, rich or poor, good or evil, simply by willing it and working for it. That's what made me successful. But what if you fail? I'm not going to fail. I'm good at what I do. But let's just say you go belly up. Not possible. Do you know how many people ask me to be on their board of directors? I don't. Or, or that I wouldn't even have to run my own business because I'd live quite comfortably on consulting alone? I wasn't aware Or of... that this roughing it in the woods in a fifth wheel is a far cry from the white sandy beaches with island huts and the European tours and... I get the idea. All I'm saying is, what if? I rise and fall by me alone. <sighs> Then it's no wonder my giving thanks bothers you. Gratitude is just a word in the dictionary. Thank you is a polite expression that doesn't say a thing. I use it socially, yes, and in business when it's expected of me. But you don't really mean it? Oh, little brother. You've got a lot to learn. I couldn't believe Grayson was still a baby when it came to knowing how this world works. I've never seen someone so naive. Rarely do people say thank you and mean it. In the back of their minds, they're still wondering if there's a better product or superior service at a better price. That's the world. That's reality. Nobody does anybody favors, not really. What we get, we earn. Someone needed to teach Grayson a thing or two, and being his older brother, the job fell to me. And so a travel advisory is in effect, and in other parts of the state, the weather is deteriorating rapidly into blizzard-like conditions specifically in and around Lake County. National Weather Service has issued a warning advising no travel. I repeat, do not travel. If you must travel, have a winter survival kit with you. If you get stranded, stay with your vehicle and wait for help to arrive. <sighs> Think we need to pull over? There's really no place to. Yeah, we'll have to make it down to the plains. Say, when we get back, think you can find time for your older brother on a continual basis? Oh, there'll always be room for you. Good, because I'd like to set up calls or video chats for an hour each week. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, it'd be a better way to advise and help you. I thought you meant to check in and see how the family's doing. Oh, that too. But mainly to advise? Listen, I'm older, and I've been around and know some things, and I want to help. Well... <laughs> What exactly do you think I need? Well, I'm not sure you have a grasp on reality and how the world operates. You mean because I can be thankful for things? You went to trade school to be an electrician. I double majored in business and economics. I just know different things I can teach you. Like what? For instance, the first rule of economics is there is no such thing as a free lunch. Not even if someone gives it to you? Look. Wherever goods and services are provided, they must be paid for by someone. It's always costing someone something, and no one gets something for nothing. From an economic standpoint, that's true, but 
Life is more than economics. Life is economics. And to put it simply, it's cold, cruel, and on you to do something with it. You and you alone. That sounds harsh. It's dog eat dog, little brother. <laughs> it's not the world I live in. This is exactly what we need to be working on weekly. Look, I'm sure for some it is a dog eat dog, cruel, cold world where every person is out for themselves. But in my world, Jesus is also there, freely pouring out and sacrificing and extending mercy and grace by loving humanity. That all sounds good, but it's still costing something. It cost everything. It took his life. Oh, brother. Yes, and we grieve his spirit when we go our own way. So it's not really for free. Ethan, I guess in my world, I don't see Christ's love pouring out on us and people giving what's in their hearts as a means to get something or as an indication that they are out for themselves. What do you think, Gray? What do you think? Clearly, my work was cut out for me with my naive little brother, but at least he was willing to be counseled. For the next hour, we inched along as the snow grew deeper and deeper. The whole time, I had to bite my tongue to keep from asking Grayson how thankful he was for the beautiful snow and to point out God in his infinite mercy sent it to us freely. And then something happened that I was definitely not thankful for. I believe we got caught out here in this. The forecast said one inch, maybe two. <laughs> and that's why I have yet to be thankful for a weatherman. <laughs> hey, they do their best. And look how bad it is. Uh, we're gonna have to pull off. We'll make it. Ethan, we can barely see. We're gonna spend Thanksgiving with our families if it takes all night to get to them. You mean if we get to them? Listen, I'm not eating beans and jerky for my Thanksgiving meal. Did you feel that? The trailer. Hold on, Gray. Hold on. Jesus, help us. Folks, we'll be back to the ingrate story in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link if there's one where you're listening or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, Unshackled. We take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street. Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, back to the ingrate, a Thanksgiving classic. It was too dark, the snow too blinding by the time I saw the simple turn in the road. The fifth wheel couldn't respond as quick as the truck, and before we knew it, we were jackknifed. Our truck was dragged off the road by the camper and we careened over a drop off into the trees below. The events happened so suddenly all there was to do was hold on and watch and wait for the impact. Little did I know the real horror hadn't even begun. Oh. Grayson. Grayson. Grayson, are you okay? Oh man, oh man, oh man. You hit the window. Wake up, Gray. You gotta open your eyes. Here, we gotta, we gotta get this bleeding stopped. You're gonna be fine, okay, little brother? Grayson? Grayson? Grayson, please, you gotta wake up. You gotta, please God. It was Grayson's side of the truck that bore the impact of the fall. I should have been the one hurt. 
It was my fault. I was the one driving. I was the one who insisted we continue on through the blizzard. I was such an idiot. And now my brother was paying the price. I didn't know the extent of Grayson's injuries. I laid halfway across him, my arm burning with fatigue as I applied pressure to the nasty gash pumping blood out of his head. Too afraid to let go and fear he'd lose too much blood, I was prepared to stay there for the rest of my life, which, given the wind chill, wouldn't be as long as I planned for. The bleeding has slowed, Grayson, so I'm tying this around your head so it keeps pressure on it, okay? Now, I'm going to get us out of here. I'm going to get us help. I know what you'd say not to go out into the blizzard or I'm a dead man, but Grayson, no one's going to find us here. Do you understand? We slid off the road and our tracks will be blown back in and covered with snow and no, no one will even know we're down here. So here's the plan. Are you with me on this? Good. I'm going to kick a window in on the fifth wheel and get blankets and every warm thing I can find, then some beans and jerky to leave here with you. Someone's got to live out here and I'll follow the road until I find them. And then we're going to get you to the hospital. You're going to be okay, Gray. Okay? So that was the plan. But as I started trudging through the blinding snow whipping so hard at my face, I couldn't even breathe through my scarf. It struck me that the only good I'd be for Grace and the only chance of keeping him and us alive was if I stayed with him. Maybe we'd freeze to death, maybe we wouldn't, but what was certain was, if I ventured further, it'd mean certain death for us both. Grayson, I'm back. We gotta just stick together, okay? We're brothers and we're gonna stay together no matter what happens. I love you. I love you. Grayson, you're awake, brother. I couldn't get you to respond and I was so scared. I'm hurt. I, I know. I I got your head bandaged. Does anything else hurt? I don't I don't know. Oh, brother, I wish I could trade places with you. I don't. Oh, Gray. Okay, um. Let's eat. We, we got to keep our strength up. Here's some beans and jerky. Well, you said... I know what I said, and it was stupid. All I want is beans and jerky and to be here with you. You're what matters, Grayson. I just want you to be okay. I can't chew. It, it's okay. I'll, I'll mash up the beans and help you. It's so cold. I'm too tired. I know, but try to stay awake, okay? Y you need to try. Gray? Gray? God, I... I don't expect anything, but... Grayson here believes you still do great and mighty things, and... So maybe you could... Could do something to help him. I'm okay with my fate, but please, oh God, help Grayson. Please. I didn't know if God heard my prayer and I couldn't wake Grayson up long enough to get him to say one for himself. I couldn't bear the thought of Grayson paying for my mistake, especially with his life. And it shook my heart in a way I wasn't prepared. Realizing Grayson would not switch places with me if he could, and he wouldn't count it as cost, but love. What kind of person does that? I'd soon find out more than just gray. Is anybody in there? Are you okay? Grayson, Grayson, someone's here. We're here. Hey, hey, my brother's hurt. He can't, uh, he, he can't move. All right. Well, we'll have to drag him up and get him in the tractor. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. I don't know how that old man and I pulled Grayson up that incline in the snow or how we managed to get him into the tractor cab, but we all three squeezed into it. I only knew one thing. We were going to live. And what was I going to tell Gray? It wasn't for anything I had done, and I could see that now. For the first time, real gratitude threatened to spill out of my eyes and run down my face, even right there at the farmer's kitchen table. Thanks. You'll be thought out before long. You think my brother... He'll be all right. He needs stitches. And in a few hours, when the storm lets up, 
We'll get him to the hospital. I don't know what to say. It's all right. Thank you isn't enough. I know the feeling. How did you find us? How did you know? We watched you pass by with the fifth wheel. And with as deep as the snow is, I just didn't think you'd make it far. So you just came looking for us? Yep. How did you know where to look? That curve's given people problems before. So if I couldn't find you on the road, I knew I needed to check that deep draw. But you didn't have to. Sure I did. Oh, you just got to understand how. What do you mean? I was the most stubborn man alive for a time. I was in charge of everything and took all the credit. And, well, didn't find much appreciation for others. And You? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Folks in town, the Christians, they were always wagging their fingers saying, Hal, you need to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and receive God's free gift of salvation. <laughs> and I tell them, nothing is free in this world. And it's a sham. And he offended God one too many times. Yep. One day, an old homeless fella came wandering through, asking for a little something to eat. <laughs> and Hal told him to get on his way. But he wasn't going fast enough. So I rushed down the back steps at him yelling, there'd be buckshots flying if he didn't get. He was just plain mean to that poor man. Plain mean. That afternoon, I was out in the field haying and hit a foxhole I'd forgotten about and tipped the tractor over. Oh, no. It pinned me down with a broken leg. Mm. And Hal hollered and hollered, but I couldn't hear a thing. And then this homeless fella came easing out of the woods and came over to me. He stood there looking down at me, and all I could think about was how I threatened to shoot this man and how I'll be the last person on earth he'd help. And good old Hal was too proud to ask him for help. So I laid there and stewed in my stubbornness. After a minute, that fellow went and got a pry pole and worked and worked till he got me loose. And then, still weak and hungry, that man picked me up and carried me back to the house. Is that right? That night, when I was lying in bed with my busted leg in the cast, I asked the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart, and I believe in him. I felt so moved and grateful I was even thanking the Lord for hearing and listening to my prayer. He doesn't have to, you know. <clears throat> what uh, happened to the homeless guy? I don't know. Never saw him again. He walked out the door and down the road. And that was the last we seen of him. We were always certain we had entertained an angel. <laughs> or in Hal's case, threatened to buckshot an angel. <laughs> yep. So now... I'm a lot more considerate and do my best to help folk and give as the Lord has given to me. Wow. And there's not a day that goes by I don't thank the Lord Jesus Christ for saving my soul. Amen. 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 Thank you for sharing your story. As soon as the storm allowed, we got Grace into the hospital in town. Now, I had a chance to tell him all the things I didn't have the courage to before. Hey there, buddy. Oh, hey. You don't have to be here. What? You're my brother. Well, you should go home and celebrate Thanksgiving with the family. I'm not leaving here without you. Well, you're missing the holiday. You said you did Grayson, I want to be here. I'm okay, Ethan. I know, but... I want to tell you how sorry I am, and it's all my fault. Oh, no, it's not. It was an accident. Well, I've had some time to mull things over, and you know what I'm grateful for? You? Grateful? <laughs> for what? Yep, me. There's so much to thank God for. I didn't think you believed in all that. Well, sometimes having an accident in a blizzard on your way home... Empty-handed from a week-long hunting trip will put things into perspective. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, really? Yeah. Like, you realize you've got an amazing little brother who you need to learn a lot from and has more life figured out than you. Yeah? Yeah. 
And then there were farmers who magically appear in a blizzard and no one in their right mind would be out. All because God hears sinners' prayers and reaches down. Yeah, we, we shouldn't be here. Well, certainly not with all our toes. <laughs> I'm glad you saw a different perspective. I did more than that, Grayson. I decided to become a fanatic like you. Wait, you believe in Jesus? I do. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I knew you'd want to give thanks, because even I do. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, that's the story. It is fiction, but fiction with a point. To point to the truth. And our Thanksgiving wish for you is that you would feel gratitude for the greatest free gift ever given, eternal salvation in Jesus Christ. Listening friend, are you like Ethan, getting by in the world thinking everything rests on you and your will? That you only have yourself to thank or rely on for anything and everything? That is a heavy burden to bear and a lot of pride to hold. Jesus tells us in Matthew 11, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The greatest gift ever given was the gift of God's only Son, Jesus Christ. A gift of faith that we can be eternally grateful for if we receive it. Have you found that faith, friend? And if you have never put your faith in Christ, why not do so now? It will be the best thanksgiving of your life. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 promise that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, we enjoy hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so send us your questions and we'll answer them here. It could be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org. Or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We would love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts on the same platform. Unshackled Daily Devotionals and unshackled in person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry, and again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. All right, folks, the winner of the sweepstakes for the beautiful scripture plaque will be announced on our social media and right here on this podcast next week. So keep an eye out because the following sweepstakes drawing will begin immediately after that. This will be your next opportunity to enter and potentially win one of these beautiful reminders of God's Word. And next time... So what are you going to do? Maybe take some night classes, get my GED. How about you? Maybe college. I've been praying about it. Man, you're always praying. The friends we make in high school have a tremendous influence on the choices we make in life. I think God wants me to be a minister. You're joking, right? I'm serious, man. Maybe you'll be my first convert. That, my friend, will never happen. They can either cheer us on to achieve great things, or they can drag us down to make choices we later regret. Art Armenta lived a life filled with drugs and alcohol. Everybody does drugs, and I can quit whenever I want to. So why don't you? Don't miss the powerful story of how an encounter with an old childhood friend changed his life. I don't understand. You don't need drugs or booze. God can shape you. The true testimony of Art Armenta on the next Unshackled. Heard in this classic Thanksgiving episode, The Ingrate, were Stephen Spencer, Steve Bayorgen, 
Sam Sanders, and Sarah Lynn Crittenden. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Martin Robinson. Audio engineer, Michael Kahn. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Jack O'Dell and Kylie Hammond. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Thanks for listening. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.